this will be the first time I've ever fished a farm pond that I had permission. A bite. I got a bite. You ever had this problem? Look at them swimming through here. Look at them. Look, 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 look. Look like that. I, they were just swimming through here schooling, and I saw them. Oh, that was dirty, to be honest with you. He got it. He got it. He got it. They just swam by again. Ah! <laughs> I see him in that bush. If you try to drag him out of that bush, you're going to break your line. But if you let him flip and flop, he'll work his way. There he is. I try to retrieve it. He's so pretty. Man. If you find out from the landowner if it's okay, if you get over on that side of the fence. I didn't get on the other side of the fence. What? I have not gotten on the other side of the fence. I've stayed on our side where I have permission. I know you can't cross the fence, but there's no rule if you catch one on the other side, you can't bring him to the fence. Well, we're gonna do a little pond fishing. We're gonna get a couple of things out there we might need. Okay, the pond. Baby spinner bait there, a little quarter ounce, we got a little three eighths. Probably won't use the big signature three quarter ounce. We're gonna need some little baby weights. Little baby weights. We're gonna need some hooks. Yeah, that little box right there weighs about. 90 pounds. That's embellishing. Embellishing. I'm known, I've been known to embellish. But my kids know that I'm a Christian and they know that I'm a fisherman. Christians tell the truth, fishermen lie. Therefore, they allow me to embellish up to 50% without it being a lie. So I take full advantage of my embellishment opportunity. You ever had this problem? Oh, have I ever. Do you think there's any way we can fix this problem? Huh? No, I don't. This is a hot mess. It just shows you greed gets you in trouble. Always remember this. Pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. So when you hog all these baits up, get your head cut off. Hey, you missed this one right here get too. shot between the eyes, brother, between the eyes. What kind of bait you gonna fish with? A little worms and little light weights. And I'm gonna take a frog in case there's vegetation in the ponds. I've never seen, we're just gonna go are we going to get permission to go pond fishing, or are we just going to go find us a pond and go fishing? How fast can you run? Huh? How fast can you run? I'm not very fast anymore. Then I guess we better get permission. That would be smart. You got you got some baits we can throw? You got some pond baits we can throw? <laughs> no, we want to use your stuff. We want to use what you use because you're the one that fishes. Down there. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I, I use it with a black and blue crawl. Huh? With a weight about two and a half up. You think he can catch a five? You think he can catch a five pounder? I think he can catch a three or four. Do you? Can we use a rod? Can we use one of your rods? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Can. We can. Yeah. See, I, 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 I haven't thrown a chain line out, so my line's about 10 years old, and that makes it more interesting because the little <laughs> kind of breaks it off, and I just think it was six or seven. So. That's why we want to use your stuff. I'll, I'll go ahead and get the cobwebs off of it, and I'll dip it in water and get that dirt off of it. If you fish with a 10 year old, then you know how I feel. <laughs> no, I think he's referring to his cameraman. I'm not exactly sure. But I think uh, yeah. I think he's referring to his cameraman. Okay, okay. Well, we're back. Yeah,
Yeah, we need to. Hey, so we're about four minutes out. So if you could get all that stuff ready for us, we'd be really <laughs> happy. Oh, that was dirty, to be honest with you. He couldn't move. Been helping him. He couldn't move. I mean, he couldn't move. He should have been massaging his legs. <laughs> Y'all are dirty, man. He's in bad pain. Let me see it. I'm going to show you what he did to me. Whatever he did to you, it ain't equal to that. Bless your heart, I saw you with the cramp. Your legs were all cramped up and they wasn't helping you and they're sitting there like they ought to be whipped. Uh, uh, he, he showed you the other video. Oh yeah, but that wasn't near as bad as what he did to you. That was terrible. You can see it. He should have been massaging your leg and helping you and they're man. laying there uh, laughing. Man could die. And you was hurting. Do you know about Theraworks? Uh -uh. Oh my goodness. Cramps. Huh? Yo, you know, you know that's I probably the last cramp I ever had. I oh, I get them all the time. I get them just one. like that all the time. It's a it's a foam called Theraworks, and you can spray it and rub it in, and, and it'll take them away in about thirty seconds. Oh, cool. We we keep the pickle juice. My wife has them. Yeah, I pickle juice. But it ain't nothing like Theraworks. This will be the first time I've ever fished a farm pond that I had permission. <laughs> Well, if you make you feel better, I'll let you cross the fence and run. It. <laughs> yeah, that'd be more natural. We'll slip in. But it's hard to slip in on the side by side. You kind of get busted. Since I'm fishing with a game warden, I yeah. better walk the line. Yeah. Walk the line. What you barking at? You get to ride all the time. Yeah, yeah. She never I'm in your seat. She never had No, stage. If you fish long enough over here, I'll call Billy. You know, the first time I walk up to a pond, I look, I can tell the water's up because of the grass. Anytime the water's up, usually the fish follow the water up, so the fish are probably gonna be fairly close to the bank. I don't know that, but that is a really good starting point. I see grass in the water, and uh, I just saw a little bass swim by. Uh, I like the water color, it's coffee colored. Little spinnerbait ought to be good. But I can tell you, a lot of times there's no wind on this pond, and uh, a lot of times it's, uh, they like subtlety. They like a little bait that doesn't displace. This blades are really causing a vibration. This thing really thumps good, and that's too much for these fish. Uh, they are very used to their environment. Unlike a public lake, these fish are extremely used to their environment. So they're way more aware of a big thumping, vibrating bait being something unusual, out of the ordinary, and false. So they tend to resist it. Uh, if it's a, a, a bigger lake and the wind's blowing and you got a lot of different bait and structure, they'll be more apt to bite a little bit more heavy duty tackle, like a jig or a crankbait or a spinnerbait. But sometimes you gotta go to like a sinking worm, a little uh, crawfish looking bait, uh, a little minna style jerk bait, and that's a lot more favorable than a spinner bait that displaces a lot of water. But I like to start because you never know. So I, I felt real good starting with this spinner bait and I had a really good bite right off the bat, first cast. Hadn't had another bite, hadn't had a follow up. So that tells me I probably should be throwing something a little different. I just missed one right there that felt like a pretty good fish. That was really a pretty good fish. And he was all the way in the back of that pocket, which again is a high water deal. Now that pocket's hard to get to because there's a tree there. And so you gotta bring your bait over the tree. And that's hard to do, but I don't worry about getting over limbs and stuff. I just try to bring my bait and get it back and try to get it where I think there's a fish, but. I sure didn't miss one there, and that looked like a pretty decent fish. 
You're here messing with me. I didn't bring you nothing. You want me to pick you out of eight? All right, look here. I'm going to pick you out of eight. No, no, I'm going to pick you out of eight. I'm going to get messed. No, I'm going to pick you out of eight. No, pick you out of eight. Go throw that. You'll catch them. I promise you will. I promise you, you will catch them. You promise? I promise you will catch them on that. What if I don't? Then I'll apologize and I'll say you're the best. You apologize. I'll say I am so sorry, Kurt. I just knew they'd bite that. I don't know why they didn't. I must not know anything. Have you ever heard match the bait with matching your tackle? Hatch. Match the hatch. <laughs> tackle. Huh? Match, match your tackle with your kind of Latin. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see. Him. I can't see. See, he's already over there. Got mm -hmm. going. I think. I think. You know what? He didn't. He didn't say anything this morning, but I think he put on a a uh, split a uh, little. Oh, I can't even think what they call them anymore because I don't ever use them. Whoa, 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 don't walk the pond bank. No. You got to walk up and around. There's a fish on the fence, you know that. That's pretty hard to believe it, as pretty as this is. No bites. A bite. I got a bite. I got a bite. And he's a good one too. He is a short enough good one now. What you gonna do with him? I don't know with my little six pound string what I'm gonna do with him. Look at him. I can't cross the fence. I hear him. Come on back out here, buddy. Run on out in the lake. He's in the bushes. He's in the bushes and I got six pound line on. Six pound line. If you flop, I can work you through it. But you gotta flop. Look at him, I got him. I got him, I got a good one. I got a good one. Don't know if I can quite lift him up. The six pound line, yes I did. How about that? He ate it. He ate my bait. Boy, he's pitiful. You see that right there? That means this pond is way overstocked. Big mouth and little body. I did a show one time with Dale Earnhardt, and he said, don't you look at that bass. Looks like Jeff Bodine. Little bitty body and a great big mouth. <laughs> they used to fuss and fight on the racetrack. But I like Jeff Bodine, so I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say he looks like... The opposite of Hank Parker. He's got the big mouth like Hank Parker, but he don't have the fat body. But we're gonna let him go. We're gonna put him back. He was on that side of the fence. We're on this side. We're gonna put him back on that side of the fence. That was the only good bite I've had. Farm pond fishing can be so much fun. It's got its challenges, but there was a lesson right there. You see that fish ran all the way and got in this grass. I got six pound line and I was just patient and just kind of snaked him through it. When he would start to run, then you can move him. But if he's not moving, you can't drag him through that grass. You kind of got to let him uh, put forth the effort uh, moving around to move that grass. So just kind of be patient. That's the whole thing, patient. I've never been good with patience, but you know, getting older, I'm way more patient. I'm a lot more patient with my grandkids than I was my kids.
you learn a lot in life. Look at them swimming through here. Look, 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 look. Look at that. I, they were just swimming through here schooling, and I saw them. Always pay attention. Look here. How about that? I just saw them swimming through there. Now again, here we go again. He's in the grass. Just be patient. That's a good one. That is so cool, man. I just saw him. Don't let him get in the bushes, honey. Six pound line. Now see him in that bush. If you try to drag him out of that bush, you're gonna break your line. But if you let him flip and flop, he'll work his way. See, he helped me out there. Here he goes again. All right, look here. Hello, little buddy. Now he's definitely too big. He's too big to drag over the fence, so I gotta go through the fence. Through the fence to get him. He shook my little bait off. Now I got him in. Now he's pretty, see, he's not so skinny. He's not so skinny at all. He's got a stick down his mouth. Get that stick out of his mouth. He's a pretty one. Guy, he's got beautiful color. How about a little farm pond fishing? <laughs> Through the fence, brother. Through the fence. That was fun. That was so much fun. I saw him come swimming in here chasing. And I wound it in and dropped it. Boy, I mean, he got it. So you always keep baits in your pocket. And I didn't do that. So I'm here without a bait. I got to go back to where I parked the little side by side. I might retie that. He's been up in those bushes. Let me go get another bait. We'll come right back. You caught one? Dang. Two pounder and you caught him? Yeah, one you caught. We ain't doing nothing but killing time, brother. What the? So, really? No, we're just having a hard time trying to catch yeah, one. Well, we can do that. Well, let the light shine on me, brother. There's a light, a certain kind of light that never shone on me. You only use new baits? Huh? You only use new baits? I like new baits. Yeah. New baits and old baits and used baits and all that stuff. I might have new baits in there somewhere. I don't know how that is. Yeah, it won't matter. Hank, you know what I think the problem is? What's that? I think we need some wind. Kurt, if we get any wind, I'm going to put you in the truck and roll the windows up. We're going fishing. Y'all yeah, have fun. We'll be back. You want me to holler at you if I catch one? Yeah, holler loud if you catch one. Huh? Yeah, holler loud if you catch one. I don't know why you got to be that way. I'll do the same. You must be on the front over there. I'll do the same. If I catch one, I'll holler loud. Hey, you, did you find out from the landowner if it's okay if you get over on that side of the fence? I didn't get on the other side of the fence. What? I have not gotten on the other side of the fence. I've stayed on our side where I have permission. I know you can't cross the fence, but there's no rule if you catch one on the other side, you can't bring him to the fence. Where's your rod at? Over by the fence. This reminds me of when I was a little boy. And we go to the pond. And I'd find me a good spot with a stump or something and I'd catch a fish. And all my little buddies would ask me and I'd lie. But now that I'm a Christian, I have to be careful on how I word things. So he asked me, if I've caught one, and no, I have not caught one, I caught two. So I didn't tell him a story, I just caught two. So I didn't catch one. 
And he said, if you catch one, holler loud. So if I catch one, I'll holler loud. But I got to be real careful not to be misleading. And I know I was misleading. You know, the most dangerous lie is a half truth. So I really, to be honest, I did my fishing buddy dirty. But all is fair in love and war and pond fishing. I liked that so very much. But man, it was good. This is where I learned how to fish. This is where I'd go down with the kids in the neighborhood. And I don't know why I've always loved to fish. I like to swim. I mean, I was a, I was a kid and I like to swim and I like to cool off. But I was just so fascinated with fishing. And I could get lost in my mind here. I go back, this takes me back to some incredible, I had a hard time in school as a kid. I was overweight as a kid. I had so many negative things. My dad was an alcoholic. Uh, we had financial problems as a kid. And all that weighs on your mind so heavy. When I came to this pond, it all went away. Man, I got lost in the moment. I was like old Huck Finn. I, I was just, man, I was in my element. And I've never gotten away from that. That's my roots. People ask me all the time, man, what, what made you good enough to compete and win tournaments? What was it that separated you? <clears throat> I had a bite that separated you from a lot of the other guys. And what people in general don't know, for every name fisherman you hear, there's a thousand that try it and borrow money and max out credit cards and go through all kinds of struggles trying to make it. And they just don't make it. It's, it's a very competitive sport. And you got two million bass fishermen, and there's honestly about 50 jobs out there, and that's it. So it's a very competitive marketplace. People say, man, what made you be able to compete and be successful this farm pond? Growing up as a kid, having a passion that was beyond anything that was real. Kids want to go to the circus. Kids want to go ride the Ferris wheel. Kids want to go to the water park. Kids want, take me to the pond. Take me to the pond. But hey, we're going to Carowinds or we're going to Disney World or we're going to, I don't care. I don't want, take me to the pond. Take me to the pond. Please take me to the pond. That's what I want. And that's where I got what I got. That's my roots. That's my foundation. And I got lost here and I escaped my troubles. And it's made me who I was. It was the foundation. You know, you can't build a house on sand. The Bible talks about that. You gotta build a house on the rock bed. And if it ain't a rock bed there, you gotta build that foundation. Well, this is where I built a foundation, right here at the old farm pond. And I, it, it just, every time I come back to one, I'm a little emotional as I've gotten older. I've got more emotional because I know what values and what's important. And uh, it's so good. It's so good. And if you can ever bring your children, you know, I've got like 19 grandkids and uh, I had my own five kids and a pond is a wonderful place to set the mood to communicate. You know, we're in the car, we're going to school, we got 500 things, and we try to talk to our kids. They're not listening, they got other things on their mind. But if you can come to this setting, this environment at the pond, and break down those barriers and just let nature take its course, you might see a big blue heron, you might even see a bald eagle, you see ospreys, you just get lost in nature. And it takes that, edge off and it 
it's an environment that's conducive to communicating with your kids. And then you can get them to tell you what's on their mind. You know, you can talk to a kid all day long. If he don't talk back or she don't talk back, you really don't know where they are. And when you can get in this kind of environment and break down those barriers, it's just conducive to communicating. And you can get so, you can learn so much and teach so much. We, we live in a crazy world. It's all about cell phones. Cell phones are not tangible. Standing in this water, in this grass, throwing this rubber worm in this farm pond, that's real. That is real. And if you can ever grasp that and teach that, uh, it, it's just a remarkable, rewarding sport to be a part of. And it's been my whole life. And it all started right here at the farm pond. You know, the other thing I'd like to say about pond fishing, patience. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Here they are, there they are. They swam by right then. They saw me. Man, that was two big ones too. They just swam by right then. Here they are, here they are, here they are. Oh. He got it, he got it, he got it. They just swam by again. Just what I was talking about, being patient. Exactly what I was talking about. And there they come swimming by, right on cue. Man, right on cue. Be patient. Snake him out of the grass. Look at that. Just exactly. Uh, he's gonna be too big. Maybe not. Ah. <laughs> be patient. You know what a young doctor wants? More patience. Isn't that cool? Mwah. When I'm fishing these sinking worms, when I retrieve it, I like to retrieve it at a speed, bring it up the surface and let it fall a little bit. Instead of just winding it straight back in or burning it in, I fish it all the way back in. A lot of times you'll catch them uh, while you're winding it in. So these fish roam a lot. They don't hold on a particular piece of cover a whole lot, so they roam. So you never know when you might be reeling that thing right by a fish. So I always try to retrieve it. There he is. I try to retrieve it at a rate of speed that will uh, help me catch a fish. See, I was retrieving that time. Now he's not a giant, but he's a bass and he's all mine. <laughs> and I was retrieving it uh, at a pretty good little rate of speed and he got it as I was bring it in and notice I have not crossed this fence. So I told Kurt we could not cross the fence. So I have not crossed the fence. So when we get back and I tell Kurt I caught six and he only caught two, he, he wants to win. I don't want to win. I want to have a good time. I want to have a good time and I don't want to turn this thing into a competition. And my grandkids, fishing, you, you tend to want to do that. And if you catch a lot more fish than your other sibling or your buddy or your brother or your, I said siblings, that would cover brother and sister. Sometimes you get bummed out. I don't want you to be bummed out. I want you to have fun. So let's don't make it a competition who can catch the most. Let the competition be between you and the fish and you and the pond. I haven't crossed the fence. I've been a good boy. Come on, jump for me, buddy. I can move you to me. Look at him, watch him. They go to that grass. How do they know they can break you off and get away in that grass? I don't know how they know that, but they do know that. Look at him. 
Now just be patient. Be patient, let him jump. You can't pull him against that green, there you go, there you go, he'll help you out. All right, I think I can lift him. Ooh. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I've caught so many of these things in my lifetime and I still love it. And I still get such a thrill out of it. It is fun. It is so much fun. He's so pretty. Man, I hate to do it. I hate to do it, but we're going to wrap it up, guys. Hey, I love you guys for watching. Thank you so much. We're, we're enjoying our YouTube adventure, and we sure thank you. Hey, log on, click in, join, be, be a part of our family. This is what we're all about right here. Thanks for being with me. God bless you. I'm Hank Parker. Bye-bye, buddy.